Hi there, welcome back. This is Andrew Sharif and this is part three of the Creator's Kingdom or Hell and the Lake of Fire. This is pretty solid, meaty sort of stuff, so this one's not for the faint hearted. You've got to be strong to handle this teaching. Um, look, uh, you can read along with this teaching. Go to my website, andrewsharif.org, uh, click on uh, Pattern Letters, and then go to February 2014, and you can read along. We're up to the subheading need to preach the gospel as impure humans who are unaware of the creator's loving provision to remit their sins through Jesus Christ cannot enter God's eternal kingdom there is an urgent need I'll say that again urgent need to preach the gospel to them obviously they can't get in unless someone preaches to them they, they, they're going to be lost if they do not hear the gospel and believe in Jesus Christ, they remain impure. And if they die in that state, they will remain outside of the Creator's holy kingdom for eternity and will be cast into outer darkness. Romans chapter 10 and verses 13. And Paul basically says this. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Basically, you know, Paul is saying, you know, how can they believe unless they hear? How can they hear unless they be sent? In other words, how can they be saved? How can they be saved? How can they call upon the name of the Lord unless they hear to be saved? How, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how can they call unless they hear? So this is the urgent need of the church. To take the gospel to those that don't know, especially, as well as those that have heard but don't believe, but especially those that never heard. The Lord has given the responsibility to communicate the gospel to those who have, to communicate the gospel to those who have never heard, to you and me. Every Christian's responsibility is to be faithful in the ministry of reconciliation, which the Lord has given to us all. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, Un all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are the ones that need to bring this gospel to people, to reconcile people into the Lord's kingdom. Only one kingdom. All things were created by him, that's Jesus, and for him. That's what Colossians 1.16 says. All things were created by him and for him. If all things were created by the Son and for the Son, it makes sense that all the beauty of creation belongs to His kingdom. And outside of His kingdom, there will be nothing but outer darkness. Okay, Everything was created for Jesus, right? So why would outside of His kingdom there be anything of beauty? There won't be. Because everything was created by Him and for Him. Inside His kingdom, there's beauty. Outside of His kingdom, there's nothing. Just outer darkness. Because there is nothing outside of his kingdom, the Lord has given the ultimate deterrent, hell, to give maximum incentive for unrighteous people who he loves to accept his invitation to be part of his kingdom, rather than remaining outside of his kingdom and his love. The gospel includes the presentation of these eternal truths, so people are clearly informed of the decision they need to make and the risks associated with delaying their decision or rejecting the remission of their sins. The concept of truth. There is a current erroneous belief that truth is subject to the individual. In other words, people are saying, uh, I'll read what it says. In other words, that truth is relative to each individual and humans therefore determine what is true. In other words, they're saying, if, if it's true to you, it's true. If it's true to you, it's true. So whatever you feel in your heart, whatever you think, that's, that's a lie. That's a lie. 
truth is outside of humans. God determines truth, not us. It's not, it's not a subjective thing. It's outside of us. Correct thinking is that truth is outside of human interpretation. Truth is determined by the Creator, not humans. The center of the universe, and therefore the one who establishes truth, is not you or me, but the Creator. You see, this idea of rel relative truth or truth that's subject to each individual, that's a product of evolutionary thinking and humanism, which puts humans at the center of the world, not God. That's why people think like that. But it's, it's a, again, it's a deception and a lie. Another current erroneous belief is that there are many ways to connect to God and to enter heaven. So, they say, you know, you know, Buddhism will take you to God or Hinduism or Islam or Christianity. Whichever one you, you choose will take you there. As long as you be a good person and live right. That's what they're sort of saying. Right? They're saying there's many ways to climb the mountain. That's what they're saying. This thinking is only correct if all the ways are harmonious with each other. In other words, they don't contradict each other. Truth cannot, truth cannot contradict itself. As there are obviously contradictions within the various ways, this erroneous thinking implies there is no such thing as truth. Okay. In other words, because there's contradictions between Buddhism and Christianity and Islam and Christianity, etc., then they they got to say there's no such thing as truth because... They can't accept all the ways if there is such a thing as truth because truth demands that something that is not true is error. And so and so that's that's why they're trying to do away with the concept of truth altogether. Or say that truth is subjective to you. Truth is not external. They're saying that. But in the reality, truth is external and truth exposes error. Truth is light which exposes darkness. So correct thinking is that there is truth. Truth is constant. And truth is is knowable. Psalm 96 verse 10 and 13 says Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with his truth. Okay? God will judge the world with his truth. Not with your truth. Not with your belief, but with his truth. That's how judgment's going to come. So we need to conform ourselves to His truth, not think that our perception is correct. That's gonna t that can take you to hell. If you're believing and you're putting your confidence in your perception, then that, will, that can take you to hell. That's how serious it is. Do not be deluded. Do not be deceived with this current contemporary thinking that, that truth is subject to you. It's not. Truth is from God. And that's what, how judgment's going to come. The world's major religious beliefs have significant contradictions when compared against each other. And when compared, they are not unified and harmonious. So, they cannot all lead to connection with the Creator and entry into heaven. All the world's religions cannot all be true. They cannot. They can't all be true because they contradict each other. <laughs> one says Jesus is a prophet. One says Jesus is God. One says Jesus isn't God. One says Jesus is God. Another one says there is no God. So, some, they've either got to be true or false, right? So don't... You know, look, God gives people the choice. He respects people's choice not to believe in Him. He does respect that. gives people that choice. I'm not advocating that you force people to believe a certain or in truth. But what I'm saying is that you can't say all religions are true. Yes, I can say you can allow people to 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 hold a certain belief system that's wrong. You can allow them to hold an ignorant belief system or a false belief system as long as they don't hurt other people. As long as they don't law needs to protect people from damage. Okay? As long as they don't hurt other people, they can hold that view. No worries. We still we love them, everything. But don't say that all religions are true. They're not. Truth separates what is not true. It is incorrect and deceptive to think that truth allows contradiction or is unknowable. 
and that we should therefore accept contradictory beliefs as all being true. That's like saying 2 times 2 equals 4 and also 2 times 2 equals 5 and both are true. They cannot both be true as they contradict each other. Truth, however, is knowable as our Creator has made it known through His Holy Bible. Jesus said, I am the way, John, John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. Our responsibility is to respond to the truth and embrace it. When we accept truth, we must also accept that those ideas which contradict truth are error and deception. It may not be always popular to embrace what is true, but it will save our soul from an eternity in hell. I know it's not popular for me to tell you that, that any belief that contradicts uh, the Bible or, con or true, true Christianity is false and it's error and it's deception. I know that's not popular, but that's my responsibility under God. And, I, and whether I'm popular or not is not the point. You know, whether, whether people like me or not is not the point. My job is to love you. My job is to tell you the truth, whether you like me or not, whether I'm popular or not. And I don't care, basically, because my first loyalty is to God. And I will be God's voice and God's mouthpiece, regardless of what other people think. I don't care what other people think. I mean, I do. I, don't, I obviously don't like to be unpopular. But I'm going to tell you the truth. That's my responsibility before God. Hallelujah. Next subheading is God's plan for compatible intellectual fellowship. As Adam was created in God's eternal image, God's original plan for mankind was his eternal fellowship with us on a compatible intellectual basis. Okay. A compatible intellectual basis. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 to 9. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Okay, so, you know, the Lord wanted to talk to him. He wants family. He wants communication. That's why he created us with a free will. For man to have a compatible basis of intellect with God, man needed to have free will. And free will has the potential for man to exercise rebellion and therefore isolation. Uh, Genesis 2.17 God said to man but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eat thereof thou shalt surely die so he gave man choice but with, if he chose that way there would be isolation there would be death there would be separation Okay. unfortunately Adam chose that right. the great tragedy for mankind occurred when Adam sinned and gave his allegiance to the fallen angel Lucifer to whom he also gave dominion over this world. Adam gave dominion of the world to Lucifer. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God knoweth that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay. The, the serpent you know, was Lucifer, the fallen angel. Luke chapter 4 Luke 4 5 to 6 and the devil take him up into a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it see the the it was delivered unto Satan. All the kingdoms of the world was delivered unto Satan. Who by? Adam. Adam delivered it to Satan. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world. Satan became the God of this world. 
how did he become the God of this world? Adam gave him that authority. Adam gave him authority over this world. Ephesians 2.2 2, um, In time past you, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. This is before we were born again. We walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So we all walked according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, that's some, that before we were born again. This resulted in Adam's descendants being sinful, spiritually separated from our Creator, and in need of reconciliation with our Creator. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, so basically, humans became separated from God and needed reconciliation. And so, that reconciliation came through Jesus Christ. God's justice and solution. God's judgment of sin is separation from Him or eternal death. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. The Lord's just solution for the remission of human sin is also death through the shedding of holy human blood in the person of Jesus Christ. So the wages of sin is death. Well, God's solution is that he himself would take that death for us. And that's what Jesus did. Okay, So we don't have to take the death. Jesus took it for us. In the light of God's revealed will and judgment, we need to humble ourselves and accept that God has taken the initiative to provide a loving and just solution to remit our sins and also satisfy his demands for holiness and legal justice. You see, there's, there's love, there's holiness and there's justice. We need to understand all three. Love, holiness and justice. Love, God loved to send Jesus to do the work for us. Holiness, God is separated from sin, cannot, cannot allow sin to be with him. That's why we need Jesus' blood. Justice, sin must be punished. So people will be punished if they don't accept Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ took the punishment. So if we accept Jesus Christ we won't receive the judgment. But judgment is still there. We need to understand love, justice, and holiness, all three. The good news is that the Lord has provided us a safe and secure eternal destiny when we choose to have faith in and give our allegiance to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pray, pray with me. Father God, thank you that you love us so much that you have given us a clear choice for our eternal future, heaven or hell. Thank you that you took on the body of a man in the person of Jesus of Nazareth for the purpose of shedding your holy blood to remit all our sins. We believe Jesus' blood is holy and is sufficient payment to remit all our sins. We accept you, Jesus, as our eternal Lord and Savior. We invite you, Jesus, to live in our heart as our Lord. Thank you that through faith in Jesus we have chosen to follow Jesus to heaven and will avoid hell and the lake of fire. Bless you. I love you, Lord. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your glory come upon your people. Convict them by your Holy Spirit Lord, of the need to believe in Jesus. They can follow Jesus to heaven, not follow the devil to hell. Let your glory come upon them. Let your anointing come upon them. Re go to my partner letter. Read that prayer. Pray that prayer from your heart again. Make sure that you, you've got Jesus in your heart. We don't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want you to go to hell. He's Christ provided everything for you. You don't want to go to hell either. So receive what God, God's gift. Receive God's provision. It's real. 
Justice is real. Sin is real. Hell is real. Holiness is real. Love is real. Receive the love of God expressed to you through Jesus Christ. Bless you. I love you and look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye for now.